Can you talk about in the monthly cycle, mm-hmm. the what is actually happening okay. so that you can understand what's happening in the body in terms of hormones surge and falling sure. and how that may impact aspects of the way that you think and feel. Mm-hmm. How is estrogen helping your body and your organ system run in the most optimal way? So you have a period, you know, the first day you bleed is day one of your cycle. So you're kind of, that's your shedding and starting over. So in those first 14 days, we call that the follicular phase. So that's when our follicles, which are the little sacs that our eggs sit in, Mm -hmm. start saying, okay, one of us is going to win. So 100, 200 of them are like, it's a race. Okay, so I just asked, so you said it was the first day of your period? Yeah, the first day of your bleeding okay. is considered day one of your menstrual cycle. Okay, and as the old is going out, mm-hmm. we're right? starting. The hormones are starting to okay. You know, the brain's like our estrogen's low. Let's go, let's go. Okay, so then day one, while the period mm-hmm. starts, that whole process begins. The brain is like starting. You know, the hypothalamus sends the signal to the pituitary. The pituitary starts increasing the level of those LH and FSH and the ovaries are like, okay, now the uterus is shedding, cleaning out, let's get ready, let's get ready. Estrogen starts to rise and then that lining starts to thicken up again. We just shed it, so it's it's naked, okay? Now that endometrial, that uterine lining is starting to thicken up under the influence of the estrogen level that's rising, okay. getting ready for a potential baby. Like okay. from an evolutionary standpoint, that's why it happens. Yep. Then we hit about day 14-ish, depending on the cycle. And then the estrogen level's at its highest. Okay. The brain is like, okay, we need to ovulate. The LH surges, and that's that's the thing that makes the egg pop, and that one, one or two eggs come out. And then when the egg pops, the popping also creates a little surge right. of estrogen, so right? So there's a little feedback right in that follicle, okay. Okay. and that, 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 uh, yeah, that estrogen surges just a little bit more, okay. and then progesterone starts being produced where that egg came out from. Okay. And that's a really efficient factory for creating progesterone. Then that progesterone starts rising. Mm -hmm. So what's happening at the rest of your body? So it's really interesting. At certain phases, our cholesterol slightly changes. So in that follicular, in that second half, you're very slight, but it's there. Your bad cholesterol goes up a tiny bit. Your good cholesterol goes down a tiny bit. Your triglycerides go up a tiny bit, kind of mimicking what's to come when we totally lose our estrogen. So your blood pressure changes, your mental health changes. Now, hold on. Let me ask you a question because I want to make sure because as you're listening and you're walking or you're ri- driving in your car or you're listening at home or you're at the gym, I guarantee you, I'd be willing to bet you've stopped what you're doing and you're now like, wait a minute, I have to understand this. Mm-hmm. And so I want to just make sure I'm tracking with you. So we have just learned that the first half of the month in the beginning of this cycle of your intelligent design, the estrogen is spiking, there's a little flood of progesterone, and then in the bottom half of the month, estrogen tanks, progesterone rises. So you've now got this estrogen deficiency. Well, it low, not zero. Okay. Menopause is zero. But still, but, it's, but it's I'm a saying lot it's, lower. it's so so I want you to pay attention to what Dr. Haver is about to explain to you. Because your body has been experiencing mild symptoms of this for your entire life. You just probably thought it was whatever but this is the symptoms of a drop of estrogen. And so in the second half of this month and this cycle, as the estrogen starts to decline, what happens in your body? So we have, some women suffer horribly from it, but we have premenstrual dysphoric disorder, PMDD, bloating, swelling. Now we think the bloating and swelling is from the really high progesterone levels. That drop of estrogen, our mental health changes. How does it change our mental health when you have a decline in estrogen? So there's a lot of research going on right now, but we know that tons of estrogen receptors in the brain and our serotonin is affected. How does estrogen and serotonin play? So it looks like when your estrogen levels are optimal, you know, at a nice healthy level, we have really efficient serotonin and norepinephrine. So those are two key hormones that we see in depression, right? They're okay. low in, depre- in women who are depressed. Okay. And so for women who are sensitive to it, 
that we're seeing the PMS, the PMDD, you know, those women tend to do okay on a SSRI for a short term. They only take it two weeks out of the month, or some of them like to take it every month. But, but it really is from that estrogen decline. We see menstrual migraine headaches. Some women with a declining estrogen, you'll have vasospasm around the brain. I'm sorry, the blood vessels will slightly um, squeeze in certain areas of the brain, which will trigger a migraine headache. And so- Wait a minute. So migraine headaches? There's menstrual migraines. And you also can feel a slump in terms of depressive symptoms mm -hmm. or anxious symptoms. Mm -hmm because of the decrease in estrogen? That's what we think. And I would imagine brain fog, ADHD, all of these other neurodivergent kind of issues that people might have also then see an impact from the decline in estrogen? There's a definite pickup worsening with people with known ADHD through the menopause transition, perimenopause into menopause. And we don't really know if it's a new diagnosis of ADHD or she was kind of making it until perimenopause and then because it's a spectrum yeah and then all of a sudden her resilience against this has stopped because she's lost her estrogen her progesterone her testosterone you know however that fits in for her and all of a sudden she's now so symptomatic and at the time in her life that she needs those facilities to be functioning at, at all levels mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know career women are having to leave their jobs we're seeing you know massive economic impact from this in the workforce and you know what i love about the fact that people are researching this is that knowing that it's a neurodivergent condition and that there are estrogen receptors in the brain mm -hmm. that, as we are learning from you, have a very close connection also to uh, serotonin and I call it neuroadrenaline because I can't say the nephroreferin. <laughs> Norepinephrine. <laughs> yes, I yeah. can't say that. Um, that it makes sense yeah. that whether you're talking about the second half of the monthly cycle or you're talking about the period in your life where estrogen declines, that of course. Your executive functioning tanks. Yes, of course it makes sense. Because if the little finger in the brain's going ding, 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 mm -hmm. ding, where's the estrogen? And now the system's going haywire and inflamed, it's not got the firepower to help you focus on the thing that you need to do right, right. now. Wow, that makes so much sense. We know that ADD, I just did a TikTok on this, you know, is absolutely, you know, peaks in menopause, perimenopause and menopause, especially if you were doing well before right. and now your meds aren't working or, you know, there's a research exploding there right now. We know about depression for sure in, in the second half of the cycle. Right. But it is interesting to see emerging research coming out on the effects of estrogen on and, you know, depression decline on ADD. This is so interesting because if Women you are not usually hyperactive. They're usually just, you know, looking out the window, calm as a cucumber, we can't focus on anything. Right. So now I'd love, Dr. Haver, for you to talk about the second half of mm -hmm. that month and yeah. that cycle. So the second half of the cycle is marked with a surge of progesterone and a decline in estrogen. And this is the time period where we really need to give ourselves some love because that rise in progesterone is quite often associated with what we call PMS or PMDD in medicine, premenstrual dysphoria, a little bit of depression, you're not really feeling that well, you're a little bit crampy, you're maybe a little bloated. You know, you're functional, yeah, but you're kind of getting a little taste of what you're gonna go through in this perimenopause journey. Wait a minute, so I think I just got something. So the second half of that month, as you're just going through this natural cycle mm -hmm. that your body is designed to run on, it's almost like a mini menopause. It could be, yeah. Many of the same symptoms. symptoms. Whoa. So if you're listening right now mm -hmm. and you're kind of nodding along as they're listening to you, are the PMS symptoms that you're experiencing in the second half, is that sort of like what you could expect you're going to be experiencing in perimenopause and menopause? I think it'll be worse, especially if it's brain fog and some depression. Those are signs of estrogen depletion in that last half of the, you know, the lowering in that yeah. second half of the cycle. And we see an exacerbation of that as those levels can't come back up anymore. Well, the good news is that if you know that that's what you experience, there are very real things that you can do. I think the most important thing we can do is validate women here 
so that they're prepared. How much better would menopause be if we knew that these things might happen, that we were hypervigilant, that we were ready to march back into our healthcare provider's office? Okay, I think this is really starting to take a toll on my mental health, mm -hmm. on my emotional health, mm -hmm. on whatever aspect of your body it's affecting, and I'm ready to intervene. What's interesting is if you were to start tracking your cycle, which everybody should do, mm -hmm. you would probably over the course of several months start to notice a correlation, if not a direct connection, between that halfway marker of the month and when you start to feel a little foggier, when you start to feel more irritable, when you start to feel more bloated, you might notice more headaches, you might notice, which then allows you to be more compassionate with yourself. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm so glad you're here. I promised you I'd be in the studio today. Shay all day, she's here too. You can't see Maddie, but she's right behind you. So we are about to have the amazing Dr. Mary Claire uh, Haver jump in that seat. And I just wanna tell you, this is gonna be one of those episodes that's gonna change your life. 